Here we've got a vintage statue of St. Joseph and the Child Jesus. It stands about four and a half feet tall. We believe it is made of a wooden structure with plaster on top, but we'll find out more as we delve beneath the surface. The owner has asked us to maintain the vintage look of the faces of both Joseph and Jesus. So we're going to do a little bit of repair work, but we're going to try to maintain that as best we can. When St. Joseph arrived, he was in pretty rough shape, a lot of breakage throughout the whole structure. The head was broken all the way around and it actually bobbled from side to side. On the back area here, especially in this section, there, the plaster was broken to a point where it was shifting back and forth. And that tells us two things. One, the plaster had become fairly thin there. And secondly, it had detached from the wooden structure on the inside, which uh, the statue was based on. So what I did was tilting the statue back somewhat, we poured in new liquid plaster into the hole that we had to open here. And the plaster poured in on the inside, roughly to this large an area, thickening the plaster. And then on the head, the stem of the neck, goes down inside, it was also detached from the wooden structure. So we injected some epoxy and then added new plaster and now the structure is fairly strong. So what we'll be doing is working our way around some of the remaining cracks and breaks, filling all of that in, a lot of sanding and plastering still to be done on the front to smooth it all out where there were paint chips. And then it's gonna be ready for the prep and painting stage. From a previous repair effort, we're peeling a patch of fiber tape and discover several chunks were being held in place only by the tape and a thin layer of plaster. Inside, it's revealed the extent of the breakage and the wooden support beams which have been detached from the plaster walls of the statue. Once the inside strengthened, the neck post reattached inside. Now the outer broken neck is secured by two-part epoxy all the way around and we have to permanently fill the shoulder hole. So now applying the wet plaster cloth onto the inside of this gaping hole. And once that hardens, I'll fill the remaining spot of the hole here and up at the top. Then I'll pour in some new plaster and I will be able to sculpt it around to match the top of his garment and the bottom of his neck as well as his back. On the hardened first layer, we add more plaster than tool it smooth to match St. Joseph's hood and garment. The frontal layers of old paint sanded down to remove the ridges, the shattered neck secured in place for replastering. Then inch by inch, we tend to the areas needing fresh plaster. Here, St. Joseph's chest is smoothed as best we can, minimizing as much as possible the extra fine sanding that'll come when it's dry. At this point, the heavier sanding, it can be mechanical on the solid base, but a majority of the rest of the statue has to be carefully sanded by hand. It's a meticulous but important stage of the restoration, and we rely usually on very high grit, number 400 or higher, to achieve the smoothest finish. With the sculpting tool, smoothing where the repairs of plaster blend together with the epoxy sculpt, Same for the crushed small cross atop the globe. Eventually that'll be pared down like the original. Applying the primer helps smooth out some of the tiniest ridges or the little surface crack lines, then applying a richer version of the statue's previous color. Keep in mind too that the gold trim work will eliminate the rough edges where one garment meets the next. The first of several paint layers I use is a deep brown base. This is only to add dimension to the folds and the garments. I'll be adding a lighter golden brown and various shades for contour. The neck is repaired except for some fine tuning with wet fingers and the touch up plaster. Then epoxy filler is added to shore up the base just a little bit more. I've chosen a realistic skin tone to replace the dark brown and gray from previous repairs. Once the added plaster patches are dry and sanded, we add the sealant brown again, and Pauline will add the lighter tone so there'll be highlighted folds in all the garments. As in all my gold trims, I start with a rich yellow base because it makes the gold deeper and more brilliant. 
Then it's gold layer after layer to all the garment collars, sleeves, and fringes. I paint with a tiny brush because it helps me keep the edges very straight and precise and it avoids having to do touch-ups later. People often ask and I tell them there's no single solid color for flesh tone because skin has many different shades. Then I move on to lip colors, eyes, and hair, and I like to use a magnifier for detail. St. Joseph is often depicted artistically holding a lily representing his purity, but with a father's strength, he was also known for his gentle demeanor, as Pauline captures in his eyes and expression. Please subscribe and share our videos, and thanks for watching.